Welcome campaigners, another episode of Campaign Terrain. As ever, I'm your host, that guy Cross, and I'm going to show you how we're going to take the stone dais that I showed you last week. This was the prototype, I showed you this last week, and we're going to take this one, and we're going to turn it into a bigger, buffer, more improved version, and get that ready for paint. So we're going to go from cheap dollar tree foam core and some insulation, and just a few simple tools, into an altar that's ready to be painted and then placed on your table. Not painting it today, we're just building to keep this one a little as short as I can. See you after the bump. Thanks for coming. So this week we're going to use my prototype to build a second uh, ritual dais along with a little altar to go on it. So I'm essentially going to recreate all this. I want the stones to be in a little bit larger scale and things like that. So this is not going to be my finished one. It's just my prototype. But let's jump into what we're going to need to build it. First, foam core. You're going to need one for bottom layer, second layer, third layer. And there should be enough offcuts in this to build the altar because the altar is all foam core, but it's very small pieces. But just in case, fourth piece. So... That's foam core for that. Now I use the Dollar Tree Ready Board, and that's so I can, that's the one the stuff where the paper peels off really easily, and it works really well for this project. Second thing we're gonna need is we're gonna need some XPS. You don't need nearly this much, you're only gonna need about that much. You're gonna need just enough for the four standing stones. So you can see these right here are an inch wide and two and a half inches tall. I believe my next ones are gonna be the ones that I'm actually gonna build today. We inch and a quarter by three, because I want them to have a more, a little bit larger grandiosity. So, foam core, XPS. We're gonna need a rulers to measure this all out. I typically use a square uh, or a, a uh, just a regular old ruler. I like the square because it's metal. I'm never gonna cut into it. The plastic one I, I have cut into once before. And, but whatever type of ruler, or rulers work for you. We're gonna need a knife. You can use any kind of knife you want. Whatever works for you to get the job done. It really doesn't matter. I've got several different ones ready to go. If you need a, if a your big old pocket knife works for you, if your kitchen knife works for you, whatever works. So you're gonna need a knife. We're gonna need the hot iron. That's the piece from last week where I showed you where I was using this at the uh, 235 degree Celsius temperature. This is what I'm going to be using to engrave the glyphs into the stones. You can do that with whatever hot, hot tool works for you. We need the paint. Then you need um, something to texture it with. As if you know, if you've been watching for a while, I like my pumice stone and my uh, cash register roller with the hot glue on it and both of those work really well for me for texturing but you can also use the traditional aluminum or aluminum or tin foil or however you want to call it ball of metal or I also have just a bumpy rock that makes a good texture as well so anything that'll make a nice natural texture for you and last just to make sure that all of your edges after you cut them out aren't standing out like brand new foam that's been cut you need something to sand it with so using the uh, regular old emery board and a paint stir with sandpaper st uh, stuck onto it. In this case, it's it's sticky back sandpaper, but you could also glue some on so, or sanding block or however you want to do that. So that's it. So that's the materials you're going to need. Foam core, uh, hot glue, PVA if you want, ruler, knife, hot iron, various paints, and something to texture it with and something to smooth it with. And that's it. After this jump, we'll get right into cutting the squares for the base. Okay, so I've peeled all of the foam board except for one part of it. I want to show you how easy it is to peel. If you get the Ready Board brand, you can just grab a corner of the paper, peel it right off. Um, if you get like the $6, $7 good brand that's much sturdier foam, then it is not going to peel as easily. There are ways to get it off, but that's for a whole different video. Uh, these will be plenty sturdy once they're completed, as you can see, because they'll have different portions. They'll have two layers glued together. They'll have the paint, which has a glue in it. They'll have, be, have another layer of coat, uh, glue on their uh, 
coating at the, at the end, all of this will uh, strengthen it over the, over the course of the build. So they will be plenty sturdy. Just know that if you get the stuff that comes off sturdier, it's going to be harder to peel. All right, so one, th one last thing to note on peeling it. When you peel it, it will have a uh, noticeable static field on it, static charge on it. And so uh, I'm not, if you see my pieces floating around, I'm not doing a magic trick or weird editing. Sometimes they hover on each other a little from the static and all that. So just be aware that there's a static component as, uh, as well, especially if you have electronics around or anything like that. Okay, my original, as you can see there, is six inches by six inches. The inner one is, or the middle one, is five inches by five inches. And I like both of the sizes, so I'm going to keep those. I'm just making the stones larger, and I'm going to be moving them back to these corners. A little further towards the corners. So, six inches by six inches, and five inches by five inches. Now, I told you last week there was a secret, and this is it. Hidden in here, this piece comes off so that there's a hidden space in the middle. You can use that. You can just leave it open if you want. You could, I don't think my altar will fit in it. Oh, I guess it will. But you can use that as part of your play if you want. You can have them be wrestling with trying to get this cap off. Now remember in scale, this cap is three inches wide. So by my scale, that's 12 feet. By most people's scale, that's 15 feet. So this is a huge piece of stone. But hypothetically, you can build that little plat that little doorway in there so that's the secret we're going to be doing that in just a moment so six inch by six inch five inch by five inch and three inch by three inch these two pieces will be cut out of the other two so you don't have to specifically cut those if we have anything left over on this it's going to get used for the altar if we don't i'll peel that other piece i have over there but i'm going to get a couple more things out of the way here and then i'll be back to cut those if you look right here i'm starting with a square corner and you can either just do that with a square piece from the corner of the foam core, or if you've been keeping it straight when you've cut other pieces, however you want to do it. But you want to start with a square with a nice square corner. If you haven't got one of these mats that shows you where the squares are, that's why I strongly suggest using a square to do it. So I'm going to place that against those two lines, then come across six inches, which is here. And in this case, I'm using a box knife, but you can use whichever kind of knife you want. Sometimes it takes more than one pass. That just depends on how sharp your knife is and how hard you press. Take this one six inches by six inches square, and this is going to be our base flooring platform. As you can see, we're going to have plenty left over from this to make the altar, so we're not going to need to peel that other piece. So this is the base. Now, on these, I came in. I don't know if you can see, but there's little dots on these squares. So I just came in two dots, which is a half inch, and two dots, which is a half inch, and cut across. Now after I sanded it and rounded off, it's kind of hard to see that. But these, this is a half inch in and a half inch in. I'm going to do the same thing again on these. Now, I'm going to kind of eyeball these corners, but it should be pretty straightforward. There you go. And we're going to do that a bunch of times. Then, do the same thing. I'm not going to bore you with it, so I'm just going to go. I'm just going to show you. Do the same thing with this one at five by five, and this one by three by three, and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm going to show you a couple quick ways to speed this up. Now, on the inner one, I only want a quarter inch off each, not a half inch off each. So I went ahead and marked those at a quarter inch and a quarter inch. Done. So that's all four corners off of the smaller one. Now, you saw me cut the corner off here. I like the size and shape of that corner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that as a stencil or a jig, really. And use that to measure off each of my others.
as you can see, once I have those all cut off, then I can use the piece that I was just stenciling onto or jigging onto to jig off of. All right, quick jump here and I'm gonna show you how to cut the altar. As you can see, altar is just four pieces, top, two legs, and this piece underneath. Now the piece underneath, it can get a little flexy this way, especially if you put like a metal mini on or something like that. Plus, this is really light to begin with, even with that piece on there, and anything that makes it a little heavier so it won't blow away on your board if somebody, you know, sneezes or gets too close and breathes on it. Makes it a little bit, a little better. So four pieces, really simple. Now, this one, when it did big enough for a person, a miniature in armor to be able to be placed on it. So it is two inches by one inches. So that's two inches long, which in my scale is eight feet and most people's scale is 10. You can adjust that if you want, but I'm going with two by one. So that's my top. So I've got a two inch wide piece or two inch, uh, excuse me, a one inch wide piece. And again, using my little table gauge here. Okay. So that's the top. Now the sides are going to be about three quarters. This happens to be about a three quarter piece. So the, these little side pieces, the legs, are about three quarters of an inch by a half. But you want to make sure they're squared off. So again, I'm using all little dots on my table. I'm lining up along this edge here. I see that it is not straight, so I'm just going to slide out a little so I've got plenty of room for my blade. Make sure that one's lined up. And Ooh, that's a bad job. Let's try that again. Okay. Leave room for my blade, line up along that line, use the straight edge this time, like i telling you to do and not actually doing. All right. It's three quarters inch and square. Now I want a half inch piece for the height. So that's and it's the easy way. One inch piece, tossing that excess off, and then cutting that in half. So that's my two legs. Now the piece on the bottom just has to be narrower than the legs and or as narrow as the legs and I tapered mine under I don't know if you can see that but I tapered it under a little but it just needs to fit in there so I already know I'm using this size piece I can adjust these as I need to so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this at the same length I don't know what that length is I'm using it just to gauge make a little nick don't cut my finger okay, now that I've got my little nick and toss the other one. So this is my table. All right, I'll be back in just a moment to uh, start to texture these with both the stone texture and the tiling cuts, the grooves that are put into it to make it a little less uh, monotonous. Before we go, I wanted to go any further. I wanted to point out, I always save all my weird little off cuts of my XPS foam. The stuff in the middle of foam core is XPS. It's just really lightweight. I always save all of these. I use them as fillers when I'm using putties and plasters. I can grind them up and use them as flock, any number of things. So I always save mine. It's up to you. Okay, as I've said before, I don't use a gridded system. So I made this one to just look pretty for the way I want it. However, for the purposes of this demonstration, since a lot of you use gridded, I'm going to make a gridded one. Now that's going to make all of the ones on the five inch tile off by a half an inch because it comes in a half inch on each side. So I'm going to do the six inch and then the, the five inch and show you what I'm talking about. I want to take, the six inch tile, come in an inch each place. And what I'm doing is I'm not putting the, the straight edge right along that line. I'm giving it a little bit of a gap and you can use a pencil, a pen, your thumbnail, whatever you need to do to make the shape in that. I tend to use one of these carpenter's pencils because I like the way the, the skinny side of the lead makes a line. 
So what I'm doing is I'm offsetting that just a little bit off of that main line using a pencil and just scoring just enough to have a groove in that. You want to drag it across. You do not want to push it. You'll end up tearing it up two or three times, whatever you think needs to needs to be put in there to give it a nice, uh, fairly deep, but not, not all the way through the foam. Just so you get that groove that'll show up after we texture it and paint it. So let me get the rest of these grooves on and I'll be right back and I'll show you putting the texture on. This time I'm gonna use the aluminum ball because that's what most people use. So I'll be right back with the aluminum ball and uh, get onto that. We're going to be sanding off the edges of all of these to round them off. So let me show you a little trick on the altar part. You wanna figure out which part you're gonna have be the outside of the altar. On the slab that's gonna be the top, on the underneath piece that's gonna be the bottom, whichever's gonna be the outside. You wanna to flip to the opposite side of that and put a little line or something to mark on it so you know where you sand it at. So as you can see, I've got a little line on all of these. So then we're just gonna take whatever we're using to sand Take our top edge and just round it off. Now this will create a little dust. It's not all that much, but if you're more comfortable wearing a dust, a breather mask, I would certainly suggest doing it. I'm not going to for the purposes of this because I'm not throwing the dust everywhere. I'm just gently rounding off all of these edges. I don't know if you can see that. There you go. Just basically making the top edge softer. And uh, if you were doing carpentry, this would be called routing off the edge into what's called a bull nose, which is just that rounded off, or actually a half bull nose, just that rounded off um, edge. So it just softens the lines a little. And that's it. That's the altar sanded. You can see all the edges. I'm going to do the same thing with all of these pieces, and I'll be right back. Okay, it's just that easy. And as you can see, these are now all rounded off. Now, I forgot to say before I left, on the altar, you need to make a couple of, there's a couple of edges you don't want to sand. On the altar, you can sand the top, you can sand the bottom edges if you want. It's just up to you on whether you want it rounded off. As you can see on my previous one, I did not do that. Um, so I just round off the top edges on the slab. On the part that goes underneath and rounds up, you only want to do the bottom edges. You don't want to do the top just to get better coverage with the glue so that it sticks better in place when we get to that point. So the same sort of goes for the legs. You only want to sand what's going to be the outside edges of the legs. You can see I didn't on my proto, but you can. and. Uh, but you don't want to sand it at the top and bottom because the top bottom you want it to be able to stand level and the top you want to get good glue coverage in here so only the edges were not at all on the legs only the bottom of the support and only the top of the slab all right let's get to texturing the rest of it uh, to get this sort of stony texture that you can see in this one we're going to go ahead and Use whichever you want to touch texture with. I normally use these two, but like I said, most people don't. So I'm going to show you the tried and tested aluminum ball. I don't know how well you can see this, but if you look at this, this is a very smooth, flat piece of foam without very much texture in it. And I'm going to show you right over here in this corner and then let you compare this corner to here. And then I'm going to go do all of them. But it's this simple. You take, this, you take the aluminum ball, you roll it across. You don't want to keep rolling in the same spot so you don't get a pattern. You just roll across them however you want to get that rocky stony texture in there. And you do also want to get the edges, including the edges of the sanded off, curved off parts. You want it to all look like stone. So now if you look, you can see the difference between this part and this part. Now let me change lights for you. So you can see this is still very smooth and this has that bumpy rocky texture for it. So I'm gonna go texture all of the rest of this, the altar and all three stone slabs, and then we'll be back to cut the stones for the rune stones that stand on the corners. Okay, as I said earlier, I'm gonna make each of my four an inch and a quarter by three inches. So I've cut a block at five inches by three inches, because that's gonna be four times four and a quarter for the five inches. I took the squarest corner I could, 
and worked from there and created this block. Now, it does not have to be entirely perfect. If you'll notice, each of these stones has a little angle at the top and I am going to be putting that in in just a moment. So, even though I'm working from the edge of the, of the foam where it's got this sort of dimpled and mottled texture here, that's actually going to end up getting cut off. So I'm going to keep that as the top and then I'm going to cut each one of these at an inch and a quarter. So, try not to make that too boring for you. I'm following those, I'm used, lining it up on this line, this line, and I'm using the dots on my board to eyeball where that inch and a quarter mark is, and I'm just trying to keep my blade as perpendicular as possible. Now, I am using one inch, or in this case, it's actually 20 millimeter, but it's marketed as one inch insulation board. So you will need to pay attention to which side it is because it is at that inch and a quarter, it is going to be a little bit wider than it is thick. Um, I previously used the quote unquote half inch, which is actually 15 centimeter, but I didn't think it had the bulky look I wanted. Now, as I showed you before, you can always use things to gauge each other. So I've cut one and I'm going to use it to cut each of the others to make this process a little quicker. Keep your thumb out of the way. I know it looks like I'm cutting near my thumb, but I'm not. Okay, this last one's a little bit over, which is fine. It does not have to be perfect. So I'm going to use the same edge on this block as, the, as my upright piece, but I'm going to line it up just a little bit differently here. So these are all going to be a little bit off each other, but that's fine. These are, you know, aged and weathered stones. So then, I want them to taper a little bit to the top, uh, both along this axis and this axis. So I'm going to take each of those and come in an eighth of an inch doesn't seem like much but it will be a noticeable line on here and then I'm gonna put that top piece on it and the top piece is just gonna be whatever angle you want what I'm gonna do is once I've got the eight inch eighth of an inch cut in on each of these then I'm gonna take that and come down a quarter inch and use that cutoff so I'm pretty much eyeballing all of this so let me show you one side of this That's my eighth inch taper. And as I said, I save all these pieces. So then I'm gonna flip that over. And about an eighth of an inch in. Okay, and all of these little cuts like this, you wanna use a sharp blade, but even if you do, you can sometimes get these and that's fine. We can sand all of that out in a moment. So that's both my tapers on, and then I want to go to the top one, come about a quarter inch down, which is here, and go to the center line, and a quarter inch down, just like that. I'm going to do the same thing for the other three, and I'll okay, be right back. Okay, you see back. I've got all four of those. I use the first one to gauge the others, just like with everything else. I cut one and then used it to measure the others. As you can see, that model dimple texture is all but gone at the top, and will be after we sand it. So, what I'm going to go ahead and do is put the runes in like last week. I'm just going to use some out of the book that I showed you in last week's video. I'm going to go ahead and put the runes, glyphs, sigils, whatever you want to call them, into the stones. And then I'm going to sand the edges of these exactly like I did the others. Then I'm going to texture these exactly like I did the others. I suggest that this shiny side, you go ahead and sand that off. So I'm going to do that as well. So I'm going to sand these, glyph these, sand the edges, and texture with the aluminum and then I'll be right back. If you want to see how I did this part with the hot tool from last week, go back and watch that week's that, that video, and I should be putting a link to that right up in here. And that'll help you with learning what I use this tool for in making these glyphs. And I'll be right back. All these have been glyphed up. I just copied the glyphs that I had used last time. I'm not even gonna put the, board, the stones in the same positions as last time. It 
like I said before, the glyphs don't matter. I just made them up so they kind of look cool. And you can taper these the glyph stones off more if you'd like along the edges. I like the big solid chunky look. That's exactly what I'm going for. Now on this version, instead of having the center stone be diagonal, I'm going to go ahead and have it lined up since I'll have room since each of these will be a tiny bit further back. So since these are going to line up line for line, what I did was flip it over and drew a square in the middle. I want glue there, but I don't want glue crossing the line. So I want to glue here and here so that I can press these down. Let me show you real quick. That's That two inch square is going to be this piece at the bottom once we're done. So I want it glued together so that it makes this, but I don't want it glued. I don't want hot glue across the line just so it'll make it easier to cut. So glue gun, again, low temp so I don't melt anything. And I'm gonna have to do this really quick because the, the on low temp, it doesn't like to stay hot as long. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, here on camera, I'm gonna smear glue on this really quick all around it and then some in the middle, then flip it over and line it and press it down. Now I want it to stay pressed firm and flat when it's done, so I'm going to sit my knife block on top of it for weight. You can sit whatever you want, gaming book, um, a rock, whatever you want. So let's go ahead and get that glued up. You want to try to get pretty close to the edges because you want these to stick down. Though, we will be able to hide a lot of sins with both the paint and the flocking. So, you want to try to get along the edge. But if you leave a little bit, that's alright. We can fix it later. My string across here. And then, a bit here in the middle. Flip that. Align that and press that. So that should be good and ready to go. Now this, we can't really do this part until that has cooled off. So I'm gonna set these aside for now and get these ready to go. But again, they're gonna glue right on top of the second platform. So I really can't do anything else until that's done. And I misaligned it, but I don't think anybody's gonna mind. So. I'll be all right back once I've got the, once this glue has set, it's gonna be just a couple minutes and uh, well, a couple seconds for you, a couple minutes for me. Once that glue has set and, and congealed in place, then I'm gonna cut that two inch square out so that we can attach it to the bottom of this piece. Yeah, the hot glue's had a chance to congeal. If you're wondering why I haven't glued in on any of the stones yet, it's just because it makes it working on this piece easier if the stones aren't in place yet. So now I'm gonna take a little bit more accurate knife, but you can use whichever one you want. We're just gonna cut along those lines on that two inch square in the middle, which should be glued together, but not attached. So we shouldn't be having to cut through any glue right here. That's the piece that's gonna be on the bottom right here. Now we're gonna taper this off anyway, so that's fine. So it's a little rough right now, so I really should get a sharper blade, but we can go ahead and sand all that off so that it's not gonna be a problem. So, ooh, that's a noise. Quick sand like that. Quick sand on this to taper it. I think I like the squares on the outside, so I'm going to put them at the bottom so you can still see it when you flip it. So I'm going to go ahead and sand these smooth, sand these smooth, center this and glue it on. Oh, excuse me. Taper these edges, align it and glue it on, and I'll be back to put the stones on. Okay, that's all done with the dais. As you can see, it all, except I messed up a little bit, pretty much lines up. It's got the little two inch plug. Plenty of room for even larger characters to go down the hole. You can say there's a ladder down there, it just drops into the abyss or whichever. You could never show it to your characters or players at all. You don't even have to build that in. So 
that's the dais ready. You'll notice that each of these has just enough clearance. If you back the two outer corners against the outer edges of the middle layer, you will have just enough clearance all around for this door to fit in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and glue all of these stones on and then I will be right back so we can build the altar. As you can see, dais is complete, ready to go. Platform fits in, you can take that off or not. You can never even tell your players that's there. You could, there's all sorts of variations on this. I'll talk about those at the end of the video. Let's go ahead and hop on into making the little altar itself. Now this same shape, just adjusting the size a little bit, can be used for a table in a, in a pub, can be used for a market stall table, put little fishes or breads or fruits and vegetables, whatever you want to put on it. You could make a little stall kind of thing. It could be used as, if, if you shrink it down a little, it can even be used on the bench next to a table. Uh, so let's go ahead and get this built. I'm going to go ahead and start with the support first, simply because that way I don't have to really measure where the legs are. I can go ahead and just stick them on on the outside. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little glue on the support. You don't want to put too much. You don't want it squidging out all over the place. So just a little bit. Again, always using the low temp because we don't want to melt the foam. Okay, and we want to align that as centered as possible. Don't want to turn it like I was just doing, but that's all right. Since the foam insulates really well, you've got a little bit of working time. The glue takes a minute to set up. So, okay, there we go. We're good to go. Now, I want to put just a tiny bead on the platform and support. Then we take one of the legs. Now remember I marked it so I knew which leg was up. I'm going to take the up and put it into that little corner there. Okay, that one's good to go. Then while it's cooling, we'll go ahead and hit the other one. Tiny bit of glue both places. And That one into place. Now, if you did everything with all those marks and matched them all up, all of the outside has the stone texture on it and all of your rounded edges go the right direction. So that's everything built. Now, that's it for this week because I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here. This video is going on a little long. I will show you how to paint this in two weeks' time. The reason I'm not showing you next week, next week is my official six-month, 26th uh, weekly video in a row. And it'll just be me talking to you. I'm going to tell you some of what I have planned for the future of this. What my overall goal is. This is what's sort of an intro as well. And tell you where I'm at, where I'm going, and why. Um, hopefully it'll be a shorter video than this one. So I will see you next week with just me talking. And then I will see you two weeks from now and I will paint this. So if you want to go ahead and take off now, great. Thanks for coming to Camp Campaign Terrain. Please like, subscribe, and share. I hope you and I hope you stick around. Come back and see us a few more times. Next week's probably going to be a little boring, but I want to be back the week after that so we can get this painted. If you are uh, wanting to stick around after the bump, that's great. I will show you these. Uh, they're going to look just like this. There won't really be a, a change to these, and. I will have a few close-ups of the new one compared to the old one, just some, some stills and uh, like fly-by video at the end. So stick around, let me uh, talk you out, or go ahead and take off now. Either way, I love you, and I will see you next week. Again, my name is That Guy Cross, and I am your host here on Campaign Terrain, and I wish you well in your campaign. See you after the bump. Hope you enjoyed that. Did a little bit of an upgrade from this version to this version. Showed you how to slap together some foam. And you even got to see what the secret was. So that's kind of kind of cool. I like it. So join me next week. As I said, I'm going to tell you about, more about why I'm doing what I'm doing. What I have planned in the works for soon. And what I have planned in the works for further on down the line. And I just really would like it if you came back and listened in on, what I was, on the thoughts that are rambling through my head. About this silly little channel of mine. So, after this next bump, it's going to be a couple of little stills or little flybys of these. And then we'll jump off to next week. I love you. I'll see you next week. And until then, I wish you all the luck in your campaign.